Today, Russia is in a state of serious exhaustion. Putin's army is catastrophically short of equipment, so it uses it only in certain sections of the front, in particular in the area of Kurakovo and Ugledar. This was reported by the Ukrainian military political observer of the group Information Resistance Alexander Kovalenko on the air of the YouTube channel Govorit Veliki Lviv. According to the expert, Russian military equipment has not appeared in the Kursk region for almost a month. Only recently, when the Russians launched a counter-offensive in this direction, did they begin to use a mechanized component. But there is a very interesting point here. When they started using equipment, they immediately reduced the number of FPV drones and cabs. Because there is no stable line of combat, and they do not understand where their units are and where ours are, Kovalenko added. Reports and analytical materials have repeatedly appeared in the information space about how Russia is losing a large amount of equipment and cannot compensate for it every month in such quantities as to break even, the analyst said. According to Kovalenko, the Russians are now going into the minus and North Korea and Iran will not help them restore their potential. They need a pause, peace talks and a reduction in the intensity of military actions. The occupiers understand that if they begin to reduce the fire impact, the Ukrainian counter-offensive will immediately begin and they need to make sure that it does not begin under any circumstances, the expert explained. As Russia's wider war on Ukraine grinds into its third year, three main dynamics are shaping the battlefield. First, Russia is fully mobilized, politically, industrially and militarily. But this mobilization is depleting resources the Kremlin can't renew. Most importantly, stocks of old Cold War vintage weapons. In other words, Russia is strong but fragile. Second, Ukraine is mobilizing too, but it still relies on foreign aid to meet urgent financial and military needs and Russia-friendly Republicans in the US, House of Representatives are withholding a decisive portion of that aid. Third, Ukrainian tactics are superior to Russian tactics, helping Ukrainian formations to defeat much larger Russian formations. But tactics are irrelevant when and where Ukrainian forces simply run out of ammunition. Ukraine has begun to seize the initiative at the front and Russia's problems are rapidly worsening. Russian Z-War correspondent and imperialist Maxim Kalashnikov openly spoke about this in his blog. He noted that the tactics of the RF Armed Forces Command had increased the acute shortage of manpower at the front. The offensives on Kharkov and Pokrovsk had worsened Russia's situation. Now, apparently, mobilization was unavoidable. Do you understand that we are actually losing the strategic initiative now? The Ukrainian armed forces invaded Kursk. The entire system broke down. The principle of a ceasefire that we will depend on the situation on the ground demarcate. In the Kursk region, the ulcer is hurting and festering. We don't have the strength to drive the enemy out of there. Why did they go to Kharkiv, to Volchansk? They only wasted their troops. This is now having an effect, and the advance on Pokrovsk has also stopped. The price of rapid movement there is huge losses. There is no strength now. Guys, the troops are very exhausted. We need to make a decision. If we do nothing, we can end up with very unpleasant consequences at the front, Kalashnikov said. He admitted that the highest military political leadership of Russia is very reluctant to announce a new wave of mobilization as it fears severe political and economic consequences. They really don't want mobilization. I understand how our leadership fears this. They really don't want it. Remembering the not very good experience of autumn 2022, especially since mobilization will have to be carried out with the economy and state administration not mobilized. We need to decide. We need to decide. The strategic scales have begun to tip in favor of our enemy, the Z-War correspondent emphasized. Ukraine's defense forces have reported that the Russians have deployed soldiers with no combat experience to bolster their assaults in the city of Vovchansk on the Kharkiv front. The 4th Volunteer Reconnaissance and Assault Brigade, named after Alexander Nevsky, was deployed on this front. They suffered quite heavy losses and now soldiers from the 128th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade are arriving to reinforce them as well as other units. However, the latest reports say that the units being brought in for assault actions in Vovchansk have received rather poor training. These servicemen have never seen combat before. It is our understanding that this newly arrived personnel is a mobilization resource raised by Russia. It is not yet known for certain whether these are former prisoners or representatives of other countries, said Vitaly Sarantsev, 
spokesperson for the Kharkiv Operational Strategic Group of Forces of Ukraine.